This may just look like a normal small village church found in a countryside village. However, Dadlington Church holds a rather interesting and dark secret that makes it incredibly unique. Just a few miles from here is one of the most important battle sites in medieval England, where the Battle of Bosworth Field took place and where Richard III was defeated by Henry Tudor's Lancastrian army. Also a few miles away is a small village named Stoke Golding, where Henry Tudor was crowned Henry VII after Richard III's crown was retrieved from the battlefield. Here right in the heart of Leicestershire, where the battle that changed the face of English history took place and ushered in the Tudor dynasty, the most notorious of England's royal families, is Dadlington Church, the place where hundreds of soldiers who fell in the battle were buried in mass graves. So join us today as we look at the church that has hundreds of medieval soldiers buried beneath it. And remember as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Dadlington itself had a significant role to play in the deciding Battle of the War of the Roses, and historians consider that the battlefield in which the Battle of Bosworth took place was in fact closer to Dadlington than the traditional site of Ambien Hill. Richard III, the last Plantagenet King, had been on the throne for two years before he met Henry Tudor's army in Leicestershire, and although the battle was fierce, it was rather short. Richard III had his army camped out on Ambien Hill, and on the morning of the 22nd of August 1485, a battle between the two sides was inevitable. When the fierce fighting began, it seemed that Richard III had the beating of Henry Tudor, however the key turning point was when a third army of approximately 5,000 soldiers under the command of the Stanleys stood on high ground near Stoke Golding, observing. When this mercenary army waded in to support Henry Tudor, the whole tide of the battle shifted against Richard. The Stanleys surrounded Richard and his knights, and during the latter stages of the battle Richard was unhorsed. The traditional story states how he was caught inside a muddy bog, and his horse struggled to get out of the quagmire. Richard before this had shown himself as a rather skilled soldier, who had killed Henry Tudor's standard bearer, and also unhorsed a huge John Cheney, the former standard bearer of Edward IV. When he was caught in this bog, things changed to a huge degree, and Richard uttered the words, God forbid that I retreat one step, I will either win the battle as a king or die as one. Richard III was then embroiled in bloody hand-to-hand -hand fighting, and bravely fought whilst in the thickest press of his enemies. He came allegedly within a sword's length of Henry Tudor and winning the battle, before he was suddenly surrounded by Sir William Stanley's forces and brutally killed. It has been reported that Halbert from a Welshman struck the final death blow, and this conclusion was later confirmed when Richard's skeletal remains were discovered and analysed. It showed the king had 11 wounds, with 9 of them being to the head. Following the end of the battle, Richard's forces split up when they heard the news that their king had died. Henry then seized the crown and became king by the rights of conquest, and was proclaimed king nearby at Stoke Golding. Now after the battle occurred, the clean-up of the battlefield did begin. Just over a thousand soldiers and men lay dead across the battlefield, and despite this seemingly not being a huge number, the battle only took place over a number of hours. The clean-up operation took a long time, and still today farmers and locals find remains of soldiers from the medieval battlefield inside fields and gardens. In fact, a vast number of remains over the years have been found, which date back to the Battle of Bosworth. Now where does Dadlington Church come into this? Well, it was here where a huge number of the fallen soldiers were taken to St James's Church for burial. The church itself dates back to the 13th century, but its role in the aftermath of the battle was hugely important. The local people along with other soldiers would bring the dead soldiers, mostly those from Richard's side, up to the churchyard, and in mass graves the soldiers would be thrown and buried within the walls of the churchyard. The churchyard of St James' Church in Dadlington would become the main site where the dead from the battle were interred inside of these pits, and today very small signs mark where those are buried. To bury a huge amount of dead bodies must have meant that the pits are incredibly deep, especially as today a number of more modern burials have taken place inside of the church grounds. St James's Church would be the only recorded burial site so far discovered from the Battle of Bosworth, but you can't rule out that soldiers were buried in other local sites too. Dadlington was very close to the battlefield, hence its selection and importance. In various different books and accounts, Dadlington is referred to as a burial site, 
and over the centuries discoveries of multiple skulls and bones have been reported. The discovery of these were witnessed by elderly villagers, who still attended the local church. Interestingly, there were also a number of pieces of weaponry and armour unearthed in Dadlington and the nearby area, which also indicates the site had real historical importance. The location of Dadlington Church today has cast doubt over the true location of the battlefield, where the final episode of the War of the Roses took place. Many now believe due to the discovery of artillery, bones and other artefacts that the battle took place around the Fen Lane area, which today appears to be a few flat farmers' fields. The true site of the battle has caused much debate over the centuries, but today it's accepted that this is the location. A source from 1922 describes Dallington as, This town stands upon a little hill, having a descent every way. It is not far from Bosworth, and near to the place where King Richard III was fought. It is in the courtyard, where of many of the dead bodies slain in the said battle were buried. Another source also comments how Dallington Church is very old and simple, and there are no monuments to those who fell at Bosworth. In the 18th century a local historian wrote how Dallington is situated on rising ground, in a good and heathful air, and about one mile from Stoke, and the road to Bosworth near to the ground where the memorable and decisive battle was fought between the houses of York and Lancaster. So Dallington Church may seem to be a normal small chapel inside of a sleepy village in Leicestershire, but its story goes a lot deeper than that, for this was a burial site of so many who fell in the midst of battle during the Wars of the Roses. After the battle, Richard's body wasn't buried inside the churchyard. His body and remains were more important for Henry Tudor's claim to the throne after the battle ended. Richard's remains were thrown naked onto a cart and paraded into the city of Leicester, before they were displayed inside of Greyfriars Priory in the city. Richard's remains were displayed to ensure the whole population knew that their king was dead and that the reign of one of England's most infamous kings was over. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.